Today we begin an exciting, life-changing series of sermons titled, The Three Greatest Words. St. Paul puts his pen to parchment and inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Please turn to John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The three greatest words have the power to change your life, to change your marriage, to change your business, to transform your attitude, fearful attitude concerning your future. The three greatest words will restore truth and justice to America. The three greatest words will crush the spirit of defeat and depression that's sweeping our nation and our public schools and our churches. The three greatest words will bring a revival of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness from sea to shining sea. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the fake news and government corruption be destroyed by a revival of truth and justice under the law of God. Read 1 John 5 and 4, please. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that we have that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Heavenly Father, in the authority of Jesus' name, we come before your throne today as the Church of Jesus Christ in America is under a fire. Anoint us to hear the word of faith, to fight the good fight of faith until we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, the deception that is sweeping our land. The victory is ours in Jesus' name, through faith that wins. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Concentrate for today on the word faith that wins. The word faith is the celebration of victory. The word faith produces joy unspeakable. It brings confidence. It gives hope. It produces the blessed life. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Say that with me. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That's the Bible. Faith gives you the victory in your personal life, in your professional life, in your spiritual life. Faith gives you victory over sickness and disease. Faith gives you victory over fear and insecurity about your future. A lot of people are now becoming fearful because of what's happening in our country. They're fearful for their children and they're fearful for America's future. Faith gives the victory over every form of fear. It gives victory over habits and emotions that enslave you. Some of you in this audience are addicted to drugs. Prescription drugs are still drugs, but you're addicted to it. Some of you are emotionally addicted to bitterness, to rage, to resentment, to depression, to rejection because of things that have happened to you into your past. I challenge you to forget those things that have passed and live in the sunshine of God's love for today by faith. Give the Lord praise in the house. There's no subject in the Bible that is exciting as faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Everything that God offers in this book comes on the wings of faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Say that with me. Faith is the currency of heaven. Going to God without faith is like going to the mall without money. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see. Romans 1:17. the just shall live by faith. Say that with me, the just shall live by faith. Listen, 
Faith is not believing God can do it. Faith is believing that God will do it for you today. Faith starts out before you know how it's going to turn out. When you know exactly how something is going to happen to the end because you have the economic power to make that happen, that's not faith. Faith is doing daring of the soul that goes further than the natural eyes can see. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you don't believe it, you will never achieve it. The Bible says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Once you believe that scripture, you have crossed the Hellespont from walking in the natural to the supernatural. Once you believe that nothing is impossible with God and you start thinking it and you start saying it, then you will start living it and your life will never be the same. The just shall live by faith. Give him praise in the house. I'd rather try something great for God and fail than to try something small and succeed. I think God's sitting in heaven waiting for someone to come up with an idea that actually challenges his power and his grandeur to accomplish the impossible. In the natural order, we say seeing is believing. You ever hear that phrase? Seeing is believing. But by faith, we believe first and then we receive it. We reverse the natural order. We see it by faith and then we receive it. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto them, if you can believe, all things are possible. Say that with me, all things are possible to him that believes. You believe first and then you receive later. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. That's what faith is. Listen, faith is not a matter of do you believe. The question is, what do you believe and in whom do you believe? Man says, there are many ways to God. We're all going to heaven on different roads. Wrong. There's a narrow way that leads to the throne of grace and there's a broad way that leads to the fires of hell. You're on one of those two roads. God says, preach the word in season and out of season. Man says, Pastor, preach a new gospel for a changing time. Tell us how to feel good without being good. Tell us about the hot tub Christianity that makes everyone warm and comfortable. Help us to adjust to our sin. Don't help us to confess our sin. Recommend a counselor, not repentance. That's the message that Many pulpits in America right now are presenting to their congregation. Let me say to this body of Christ across America, the way to get rid of your sin is to confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ and let the blood of the cross cleanse you from all iniquity. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible says all nations that forget God are turned into hell. Ladies and gentlemen of America, church members all, Christians, 60 million of you, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Have faith in God. Quit listening to the absolute destructive message of fake news. Pick up the good news and read this. Let your faith be established on this. Our tomorrows are as bright as the sunrise. Our God lives. He has all power in heaven and on earth. The just shall live by faith. Faith is not emotion. You can walk into a hospital room and cry for an hour and nothing will happen. You can pray for 60 seconds in the spirit of faith and cancers will die while you speak. That's a fact. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is substance. It's real. 
It's measurable. It's visible in the eyes of God. The Bible says, and when Jesus saw their faith, say that with me, and when Jesus saw their faith, faith has evidence. Faith is based on the evidence of what God has done in the scripture previously that gives us hope for what God will do today. God's provision is in his promise. Are you willing to make a proclamation of faith? Because God is listening when you pray in the name of Jesus and you make a proclamation. All heaven turns loose and starts to answer that prayer. Listen to me. When you go to a prayer meeting, and someone says, oh, Jesus, do something sometime. That's not a prayer. That's not even asking. When you pray, say what you're praying for, what the answer you're looking for, and to whom you're praying, and for whom are you praying, so that when God does it, you know it wasn't the random chance of probability that professors tell you will happen if you live long enough. When you pray for a specific miracle, so specify it that when God does it, even an atheist has to admit, God did this.